In this episode, we're going to be looking at loops. So first of all, let's just quickly clean up uh, this thing we have here. So let's set it back to name just so we know it works. Boop, and that's fine. OK, so we're mainly going to be taking a look at this list here, the one that we already have. And let's just try to iterate through this list. So you see how we're displaying this filter list here? Uh, we want to display each object individually. So let's make another paragraph. And inside of this paragraph, let's say span. And we want to render a span for each of these objects. So let's go v4, item, in, list. OK. And now, basically, every single item in the list is bound to this item here. So let's just go ahead and type in item, refresh. And here we can see that. Uh, that it displays it. So we can do something like put a comma after. And there we go. Now they are comma separated. Let's also quickly take a look at the DOM tree so we know what scope is v4 applied to. So it's not applied to, to clearly point this out. Let's make another span inside here. So we have uh, uh, one span nested inside another span. So you can see that the v4 loop to where, to the element that you apply it to, that's the one that's going to be iterated through. So this block will be rendered, rendered the one that I'm highlighting. So a span inside a span. So this is the parent element that is going to be iterated. So in terms of the list, if you remember here we have where we have our filtered list, we can use that as well. So let's make another one here. Let's type in filter list. And here you can see that we are iterating through this list as well. This was quite short. I, I don't think before there's not much really to know here. Um, it's just a general for loop. Uh, if you want to actually, let's do this. If you want to know the index, the, so the position of the item, what you can do is wrap this in uh, brackets comma, index. And now what we can do is say index dot item. And here we can basically say which position they're at. And inside of here, we can actually say plus one. Oh. And you, you see that you can perform logic inside the curly brackets as well. And you can see that we're basically just saying which position uh, the object is at and uh, what item is in the list. Now we can actually, so let's do something a little bit more complicated. Let's wrap this in an object. And let's give this a property name. And uh, let's make a second property, um, age. Let's put like 10 for now. Uh, 15, 20. Cool. And now if we try to render it, you can see that the item is basically uh, we're getting an error here. So let's quickly fix our filtered list. So x dot name. So we want to access the name property and let's refresh it. So now we're displaying objects and let's access an individual property. So let's actually remove this filtered list that I'm rendering here and let's put item dot name. All right. So with loops is just generally like thinking logically, All right? Item, you have an array. So this is the scope of an array. So the first item is going to be each individual object here. And you can have nested list and you would access them same as you would do this. So let's make another span. I'm not going to actually make a nested list, but just to make a point before item two in item dot list or rather nested list. So if you had some kind of nested list, you could then conditionally uh, render that. So imagine if this is a comment section you have each comment section block 
So like on YouTube, you have the main comment and then you have all the replies within that comment. So this would be the main comment. You would render a row for each uh, main comment and then for all the nested comments, you would make a second for loop. Now let's remove this.